Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have a big box and it's uh, from a store called uh, Fever. I did not hear from them before but they seem to be very big. They have about 60 warehouses uh, spread over the world. And it is a spot welder, a battery spot welder. And it is not one of these simple things like this with uh, that runs on batteries. This one was already, I think, around 40 or 50 dollars, including the battery, but it broke very fast. This one has a, just a normal power plug, so you can just run it from the main power. I was actually surprised I didn't hear of them before because they have tools for around the house, tools for cars, they have a lot of electrical tools. Well, they have spot welders, fire yucks. Just think of it, they have it. Let me get it out of the box and we have a closer look. It is very well shipped. It had another box around it. It was shipped from France to the Netherlands within two days, so it was super fast. The model number that it is, it is the 737G. And it's an uh, intelligent precision pulse spot welder. And oof, the current on the secondary side is where we actually are welding on the batteries. is adjustable from uh, between 500 to 800 amps. Wow. So what have we got? We have here the welder. We have a manual that explains step by step how you need to set it up. Very well done. We have some spare fuses. We have tips and even a set of spare tips that we need to screw in here. We have the welding strips to put on the batteries. Two sets of them. One is maybe thicker than the other. And we have here a battery holder that probably we can hold the cells and it's more easy to weld. There are some stickers. We Here it says you need to be careful because you can set the pressure here. The thicker the metal the more pressure you need to put. Because with this pressure you push the strip on the battery and then at the end you can hear it click then it starts to weld. So the idea is when you have the pins in, you push and then it will go. Well, you can set the pressure of the switch. And the warning is about if you put it completely to the end, it wouldn't work. And if you put it to the other end, it also doesn't work. So make sure you set it correctly. Uh, we have on-off switch. We even have a pedal. You can fire the welding with the pedal if you need all your hands to hold everything. What else we have? Tough tools, half price it is. The price is nice, it's, it's a bit over 100. So it's twice the price of these small battery things. That is actually good. Uh, yeah, they say it's maximum 15 amp. So that will work on my uh, electricity group. And here it says you can adjust the amps on the secondary side between 500 and 80, but I read in the manual it is about 80 to 800 that you can change it in percents. And here they say, well, be sure that you put it directly in your wall socket. Do not use an extension cord because they really want you to have a 2.5 square electricity cable. And they even say here that your master brake switch should be 40 or 60 amp. Well, I know I have 40 and my group that this is connected to is only 16, but I see here I need 15 and I have a C characteristic, so that will probably work without any problem, but I will try to put it as close as possible to my wall socket. And then we see what kind of settings we can do here and put the tips in. Let's see what happens. It's a big transformer. So I hope I don't blow my fuse with the startup current. Uh, no, it is not. What can we do? Can I switch off? Yeah, we can see maybe better. These are the pulses. I think if you set it to two pulses, it is between one and 
10 milliseconds. And if you set it to one pulse, it is between half and five. And well, we do, it is blinking. It's now 40%. And we can just get it. Zero is really zero. So then probably 99 is the maximum. Which would be 800 amps. And what is the lowest? Now we are in the pulses. One pulse or two pulses. Well, we do two pulses. Try again. How low can we go? So 20%, no, 10%. Can I do another digit? 10% being the lowest, so 10% is then uh, 80 amps, and 99% would be very close to the 800. And so this is the button to step from digit to digit. It just goes around, and when you confirm, it goes. So let me get to two pulses. I think I start with uh, 60. Should be like 500. I don't know why it feels good. Okay. There is a little light, so we can actually see what we are doing. That's good. And I should probably add the pins in there. According to the picture in the manual. It should be sort of in the middle, so the pins are not too long. And uh, yeah, because we can lose current also in the pins. So I sh sort of put them halfway. Try to put it as uh, straight as possible. Before I really fix it properly. I see we got two samples. It didn't specify, but I tried to measure, and I think this is the 0.1 and this is the 0.05. So I wrote it down. I connected it, and well, if we push, it will go. It's a low voltage, so I can do it by hand and without making a short circuit. But we can see the light here flickering a little bit. But it is okay. If I do my LED, can we see it? Boop, boop. We saw a little flash. Um, yeah, but I don't expect a problem. Let's see. Now I want to try. How does this work? I will put the point one. And that being closer to, because it can do a maximum of uh, 0 0.12. So that would probably yeah, I will just go immediately to 80% uh, because I'm close to its maximum. Two pulses. You could hear that also. Boop, boop. Tuk, tuk. You could hear two pulses. So then probably... Now I hear one time, I think. Yeah, book. You hear it one time. Okay, well, let's see how that works. I put the battery in here. Let me do the other side. Put the strip. And then we need to push it up. Let's see if 80% two pulses is enough. I do not use the foot pedal, so let's see. I need to make a good contact. Place it correctly in the battery and Oh, sparks. Well, let's see what we did. Close by. We see indeed two points. Well, we can do four. Prefer to do four. And this is stuck. I think we guessed right. I don't see any decoloring. So the temperature, we also need to be careful with the temperature. That's why you don't solder the battery because of the chemical process and you cannot heat it too long. 
Uh, otherwise you would just put your wires directly with the solder, but we don't. And that is because we don't like heat on the batteries. But also, if you weld with a too high current, then you would see a decolor. So I wonder if you put it to 100% or 99 in this case. If we see then a decolor, that would be interesting. Okay, that also looks good. With this uh, material, the 0.1 millimeter between 80 and 99 is uh, it's good enough. I don't see any uh, yeah decoloring. You would see it become maybe a little bit blue. Now it starts to have those um, strange colors when you heat metal. I don't see that. Well, actually pulling it loose doesn't work. It's 0.10 of a millimeter. So if I use my fingers and I pull, it will work as a knife. So I don't do that. So I will try to use with the plier and then pull and that works. But the metal breaks. Well, we can see that it was the metal that actually broke and not the weld itself. It broke, of course, on the weld because that's uh, where it is stuck. But the weld itself is still fixed. So that's kind of cool. So the weld is really, really good. Just the metal that broke. Let me try to abuse the weld a little bit uh, more with the screwdriver because it had two points. Well, look at it, it finally came loose, but not without breaking the metal again. The weld was even so good that it is still here. We still have a piece of the strip here on the place where the weld is. So that is pretty cool to make your own battery packs with this. And it just works very convenient. The, the foot pedal maybe if you need to hold a big pack and you can't really push it or you need to push it very hard and then you can still use your foot. So I will see how that works. Okay, well the foot pedal is just sort of a DC plug. You push it in and then when you use the pedal, it starts to pulse also. But the thing is, you need to put pressure on the weld. So I think when you use it, I will use the battery pack, you need to push it so you have the tension of the spring and then you push it. Because if you don't push hard enough, it will just short circuit on your, on your strip. But of course, the heat needs to go into the battery to make it stick to the battery itself. So be careful when you use the foot pedal, you still need to apply pressure for a good weld. Because if I do like this, just put the strip and I then use the foot pedal and I don't put enough pressure, you will have a, a terrible weld. So keep in mind when you use, still apply the pressure and then you will have a proper weld. If you wonder how does this work, because how are we able to pulse this uh, 800 amps? Well, they do this of course with the transformer and the voltage secondary is very low. So if one transformer, a lot of windings on the primary side here, probably uh, two and a half square. And then on, on the other side, we just have one or two windings. And these cables are crazy big. This is maybe 60 square or even more. And it's just two, three windings. I think it said it was between, uh, between four and uh, five volts. And then the switching we do on this side. Just with an, we can do it with a manual switch. But then of course you need to pulse it. But if you use here the triac and some electronics, you just pulse on this side and here it's about uh, 15, 16 amps. Eh? And then here you are switching the 800 amps. So what about uh, we open it and have a look inside? <laughs> 
transformer, you see the, the wires are not that thick even, so I don't know why they want you to have two and a half if they use air one themselves. But uh, yeah, this is for the transformer. It is fixed on a big plastic block. Maybe, I don't know, for the noise, because otherwise the whole casing will maybe shake when you do the pulse. So um, it makes less noise. It's all metal, by the way. It, it, it seems properly made. And well, this is just a pressure thingy. Micro switch. And this is the winding. Look at it. It's even more than 60 squares, probably 24. Yeah, it's probably a lot of windings on this side. Let's say if it's 400 windings with 200 volt, then you have uh, like two windings on this side. Very thick, very thick. Uh, here we have the probably the big triac. I think we have some protection here. One is when the transformer is too hot, will probably not allow you to switch. And this is just a micro switch to activate to activate it. Or just is just a normal or closed and when it becomes too hot it is no it becomes open so then this switch doesn't do anything. Could be very basic. And we have here a component. This is probably the big triac. Let me find out what is the time number. But yeah, I don't think it works much more complicated than that. The electronics is mostly for the display and the pulse length. I think the welder did a great job, especially when I compare it to this little battery welder I had up to 400 amps, I think it could do 400, 600, but still it was from this little battery and the battery was very shortly already swollen, so I needed to dispose those batteries safely because I don't want the fire in my house. And then this one is only two, two and a half times that price because it is just above uh, 100 euros and then you just get so much more where you can actually set your pulse, uh, set the current. I think with this little battery machine you could also do, but also with the foot pedal you can just position everything a lot better and um, you can actually set the pressure that you apply while with a battery welder you need to just need to push yourself somehow hoping that the battery doesn't fall and now you just hold the battery and you just push. So I think it is a great solution for welding batteries. If you think well it looks very familiar and maybe you have seen also the Sunco also with the same type number, the 737G. Um, if you want to weld, by the way, uh, thicker metal, because this one goes to uh, 0.12. If you want to weld up to uh, 0.15, they also have the 788H. I don't think it is a secret that it looks like the Sunco because I saw all the pictures from the website and they just sold it as a, as a Sunco. The nice thing about that is you can get extra accessories from Sunco that will probably fit on this one. Like uh, you have a little handheld that you can push. And that is all available. I will leave some links. If you want to order some tips, you just look for Fever or look for Sunco. Just which one is on stock right now, you order that one. So that is it. Thank you uh, Fever for sending me this device and thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.